Hey Laravel devs, I've got something super exciting to share with you. This is Visual Builder. It saved me hours and I want to show you how in five minutes we can create a form using a drag and drop interface in Laravel. So this is designed to allow someone with minimal PHP experience to create forms. If you're an experienced developer, it massively speeds up the process of creating forms and layouts, front and back end and allows us to easily include a set of components on the page uh, which can be any customized component that you like with a drag and drop interface. So let's have a look at the admin. Once you've installed the software, you get a customized admin page. Defaults to VB admin, you can override that and set that as whatever you like with its own custom auth guard and user table. So let's log in. And it enables us to create forms, and forms are made up of fields, and the fields have validators, and an input type component. To put them on a page, we create a layout, and the layout contains elements. An element can be a field, or a button, or a row, or a column, or a custom blade function. Um, anything we define in a component can be, a, can be an element. So let's have a look at creating a form. Now all of the forms in Visual Builder have been built with Visual Builder. So this is a demo of the system working. So we're going to create a form called BB user create. And you can see there we've got client side validation that's used the undocumented Laravel precognition to use the server side validation, but with an Ajax call to validate that field when we lose focus. So let's call that create demo. And where are we going to submit to? Let's have user create. That's valid OK. That's a valid route in the system. So that's the named route. That's the URL. And you can see that method is updated to get. Now that means that's not actually the right URL that we want to use. Actually, we want user store for create. And now the method updates to post. We've all made the mistake to submit using the wrong method and the form doesn't work. Um, so the default Laravel user model, at models user, we're not going to use this time, we're going to use the visual builder user because I've got some different attributes on it. So this binds this model to the form. And we've got a component view which is a XVB form dynamic form that will put all of the elements that are on the form on the page. And when we save, we create a new form and it will then prompt us to create a layout to put the form into. So we can start with an empty layout or we can clone an existing one. If we've got to create and edit form that are both exactly the same, then you might just want to link to that form rather than clone it. Um, so in this case, we're going to start with a blank layout. So Visual Builder uh, has been created using Bootstrap 5, um, but it could quite easily create forms using your own CSS framework, your own templates with Tailwind or, or even Livewire. Um, it's agnostic. It doesn't care about what's in the component. It's just putting a placeholder for the component on the page. So we're starting with, this is, this is like uh, WP Bakery Visual Composer. It's a drag and drop interface with rows, columns, and you can put elements on the page. So let's start with full name. And let's have email and gender and let's have date of birth. So I've already created these fields, so this is a little bit of a shortcut, but they're super easy to create and copy. So if we have a look at preview, we can see what the form looks like. Cool, we've got four fields and we've got a drop down that uses select two, so we can search. Um, we've got an icon, some help info, uh, placeholders required. So all of the standard form stuff that you need is built in. Um, now we need a button. We've got to save this. So let's add a row. We get an empty row and an empty column. And then let's add a new element. So the element templates currently, there's only five at the moment. We've got a row, a button, a login button, a big button, 
and a custom blade component. If we perhaps need to do some conditionals in the code or put, put some custom code in, we can do that in the back end without writing to a file. Um, but for now, let's have a save button. <clears throat> and all of these elements have properties that can be overridden. The form fields have classes and the elements also have classes. So the two get merged together. So if we have a look at this form now, let's just quickly see what it looks like. So we've got a save button, fantastic. But let's customize and override this style. So if we go to button settings, all of the elements will have a slide out panel to customize the ID, the classes, um, size, the inner HTML, whatever is appropriate for that element. So in this case, we're gonna take off margin start auto and make it full width. And we can customize the icon, let's save icon, let's use this one. Um, and so you notice bootstrap classes, but you can easily use Tailwind or whatever version. Um, and then we've got the standard color classes that will get added, primary, info, success, warning, error. So all easily changeable. Let's save that button. Great, go to preview. And now we've got a big button full width. Oh, now let's say we want to put some more space in here, just increase that alignment a bit. So we can go to the button settings and add a class of NT4, save. Great, we've added some space. So here's a form. How do we now put this form on the page? Well, under the design view, we can go to view code and sample code for this form has been created for us. All we need to do is copy and paste it into our editor. So in the blade view, we're going to put in XVB form, dynamic form, pass in the form model. Now we can either load that model in the controller or we can do it directly in the blade view and pass in the name or the ID. All of the IDs in Visual Builder are using nano IDs, so that means when we export, um, all of the elements can be exported to JSON files for re-importing to a different system. Um, but with a nano ID, we've minimized the risk of there being a clash of IDs. We don't want form ID of one um, being able to import into another system and override an existing form, so we use nano IDs and then we can have unique uh, IDs across the whole system. Um, so that's all that you need to put into your blade view and what that dynamic form component does in the background is create this blade which gets cached in a view um, so it's still super quick to load um, and that form is made up of rows, columns, fields, uh, another row and column and a button and you can see all the classes and properties that are set on those elements. So that's what's created dynamically in the background from our layout. Then in your controller, um, we create a sample controller for you. Now based on the model that we've chosen for this form, it's going to create a user controller and uh, we've got a show and then the create form itself will look like this. Now you would need to create this file yourself, but these are just examples that um, you, can, you can copy. Um, so we're going to pass in the model that is a new user and the form, we go form get and the name of the form and that, that gets passed into the view. Um, we've also got a store method um, which receives a dynamic request. The dynamic request will validate all of the fields and if they pass validation then we'll get here or if they don't then the form will be passed back with your error messages. Um, so we've got 61 different standard Laravel validators already and you can add your own custom validators as well. So if the request fails, uh, passes validation then we're going to have uh, a transact database transaction, create the user and commit the transaction. So kind of standard code, boilerplate code, but it's a starting point that gets your form working. You may even want to customize it and add additional um, properties that update relationships or something. Uh, so then we've got an edit uh, controller action um, which loads the same form and uh, that 
we might want to then change that if let's say the edit is slightly different to create we might want to put in a different uh, form there and then under update um, it's the same as same as create essentially we pass in a dynamic crest but we also receive the user model update the user with the uh, new data um, and then return the user back so just boilerplate code but it means that you're copy and pasting something that actually works straight out of the box so that there is visual builder how to create a form super quick